Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the texture maps for the standard uh, Second Life avatars. And right now, I'm going to do it on the female model, but the exact same concept works for the male model as well. And I'm doing this mainly for educational purposes because I'm also going to be posting the, the uh, project files um, for the Second Life avatars all set up and ready to go for you. Um, but um, if you ever want to do it from scratch, you have different objects you want to do it, there's a lot to learn in this tutorial. So um, um, let's get started on that. So first of all, we'll notice if I click on the Paint tab, okay, and I'm going to go into putting Alt uh, F3 gets me into color map mode. I'm going to turn off this symmetry I had left over from the previous tutorial. Now um, you can you can get the different the display modes under here, where I right now I say of. Uh, uh, color maps, transparency maps, so on and so forth, and you also have the quick toggleable um, hot selection, brush tile, and quick uh, render view mode. We won't talk about all those right now. And down here we have shiny gray material colors and layer colors. Anyway, I digress. Uh, with right now, we're going to be in uh, looking at the color maps, the, the diffuse maps, texture maps, however you want to call them. And as you notice, it says no map applied across the model. And you'll be surprised how many times I get the question. Um, I tried painting on the model, and it said no map across, and, the, and it doesn't work. I don't know what's going on. What's going on is that there's no texture map on the model. And what texture map is, it's a 2D image that's wrapped around the model. If you try painting on a model without a texture map, you're not going to get anything. <laughs> okay, so we're going to create texture maps. And for this model, one texture map just won't do because it has the UV mapping laid out in a certain way that requires uh, one texture map for the head, one for the upper body, and one for the lower body. Before we create the maps, I'm going to show you exactly what that means. So first off, if I say Control A to select everything, and I'm going to click on the, the Paint Setup Wizard icon down here. Now, what we don't want, we do not want to use this tool on this model because although it's a really cool thing, it does auto UV mapping, it takes any model and just gives it a UV mapping so you can paint textures without worrying about it. But that only works if you can export that model from Blacksmith Rudy and bring it into another program. But if you're doing a Second Life um, texture or if you're doing a texture for any sort of predefined content where you don't have control over the UV map, then changing the UV map in here isn't going to do you any good because the map you send out is not going to it's going to be garbage. It's going to not, it's not going to work outside unless you can apply it to the same model which has been UV mapped. Anyway, I'm getting off track again. Here we go. So display UV mapping. <coughs> now look at this horrible mess. This is all the UVs laid over top of each other. Now, if you were to take a single texture map and apply it over this whole model, it's going to try to paint over the UV space like this. And there's going to be a lot of stuff overlapping with it. If you notice, if you look in here, you can see something like a face. And over here, there's, I just know this, there's a, there's a torso and there's feet and ears all overlapping. And it's just going to look like a mess if you try to take one texture map and put it over the whole model and make any use of it, right? So, but let me show you what you can make use of. In this particular case, the makers of the, these models were, were good enough to make three different materials for the head, um, upper body, and lower body. And if we use the picker tool, we can select materials. So that means, and polygons is more natural when it comes to selection. Now, if I click on your head like this, right, that is going to just select all those polygons in the uh, in that in this material. So any polygon that has this material associated with it will get selected. Likewise for the upper uh, body and likewise for the lower body. Okay. Now I'm going to click on this head again and I'm going to click on the uh, the wizard hat and I'm going to say display UV mapping. Now all we see is this and now we can see nothing's really overlapping. This is the way the UVs are laid out for the face and that's these are the back of the head, that's the ears and this is like teeth and inner mouth stuff. Okay. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to now create one texture map to go onto that material. So if we create a new map, and we're going to call this head. Okay. And now notice how um, uh, we, PNG is in the name. Uh, that's uh, Blacksmith 3D's way of keeping track of uh, what format you want to export to. So this is, for all intents and purposes, the file name. So when you export it, this is going to be the default file name that's that's going to export to. And I'm going to, uh, because Second Life's maximum texture size is 1024 by 1024, we're going to use the maximum size. And also Second Life 
um, um, like many 3D, real-time 3D programs, only lets you use power of two for width and height. That means the width can only be uh, like 64 by 64, or 256 by 256, or 512 by 512, or in this case, the maximum, 1024 by 1024. Blacksmith 3D doesn't have that limitation. You can use whatever resolution that, that your system can handle. Um, you have enough RAM for it, system RAM that is, not virtual, uh, not video RAM. Uh, but in any case, we're doing this for Second Life, the maximum texture size of 1024 by 1024, and that's what we're gonna use. So I click OK. And now this is gonna be white, and uh, but what I'm going to do is, just to make everything absolutely clear, I'm going to color code each map. So I oh, I just selected, I, I the, my, as my secondary color is being red, and now I'm gonna right click onto the map, and I'm gonna say clear. Right. And now I'm going to drag and drop this map onto the head. And then when I'm prompted here, it's going to ask me if I want to apply the map to the whole body or just the material of the head. All right. And based on everything I just told you, all right, we do not want to put this map over the whole body. All right. We just want to put it on the head. So we're going to say no. Click no to apply the material only to the head. All right. So there we go. Now the head is red. It's got that texture. Of course, you're not going to want to use red if you're doing a a realistic person, um, but this is just for our display purposes. So now I'm going to say upper body for this new texture, and again 1024 by 1024, and click OK. And I'm going to choose blue. Let's clear that. And I'm going to drag and drop this to the um, to the upper body, and I'm going to say no again. Right, I want it just on there. And by the way, that was a little shaded a little darker because the head was selected and therefore it shaded everything else a bit darker. So I just hit Control U to unselect all so everything's a little brighter here. I'm gonna create a new map and I'm gonna call this lower body. And again, 1024 by 1024. And click OK. Now, green because I like to color code things. Now, click on no. There we go. Now we have the Second Life avatar with three textures assigned to the head, the upper body, and the lower body. Now, at this point, I'm gonna apply just a few uh, uh, test paint strokes, and you're gonna see there's gonna be an issue that pops up, and we're gonna deal with it, okay? It has to do with how they decided to lay out the UVs. So I'm gonna click over here, and I'm going to start painting. And so I'm just going to do this paint black stroke here. And you notice how I can paint across from one map to the next and there isn't any issues. That is just a hidden surface issue there. So I can go like this and I can paint there, under there, and there's, there's no issues with that boundary. Okay, and black is, is going to hide too much. So I'm going to start painting things yellow. Okay. And of course, if you're doing a real project, you're not gonna do these simple colors. This is just to illustrate, right? So notice how Blacksmith 3 doesn't care about this material, for this map versus that map. Once it's set up properly, you can paint across them like nobody's business. But as you notice here, when I painted on this side, the paint just showed up on the other arm and you're like, okay, what's up with that, all right? What's up with that is, um, the, the way they did the UV maps on this model is that they made one arm, they made both arms overlap on the same place. So I'm going to show you this again by selecting the uh, that um, the upper body and material, and I'm going to click on the paint wizard, and I'm going to click on display UV mapping. Here we go. Here's the front of the torso, here's the back of the torso, and here's the top of an arm, and here's the bottom of an arm, or inverse, vice versa. I don't know, and What's missing here, what's missing is another arm, right? The other arm is exactly precisely on top of this arm. So if you paint pixels in here, right, they're gonna show up on both arms in the exact same place. And so what that does is if I'm painting here, it's not that Blacksmith 3D is doing any symmetry operations and automatically doing something over to the other side. It's just the same texture map, so the pixels you see here are gonna be the same pixels you are there. So nothing too magical, okay? Uh, it just might be confusing at first if you don't know what's happening. So I'm gonna control U again to unselect all, so we're not restricted on what we can paint on. Um, and so here's the trick, okay? I'm gonna paint from this arm onto the torso. 
and watch what happens. You see what happens is, because this is all nice and continuous, that's exactly what I intended, but this paint showed up over here because it's on the same place in the map as this is, right? But on the torso isn't set up in such a way. The torso is set up so I can paint differently from one side to the next. Now, uh, so that leaves us with a bit of a conundrum here. It's like, well, how do I touch up this area without messing up this area and so on and so forth? So let's just take another color green and I'm gonna paint a little bit over here and that looks fine, but uh, look what happened over here. You're gonna go back and forth, you're gonna get dizzy. So the solution is this. You use Blacksmith 3D symmetry tools to paint any areas around here. And if the previous video we've had where we showed you um, how to fix the symmetry on the default uh, OBJ files for the, um, the avatars because there is an issue uh, regarding uh, the way they're set up and we fixed that in the previous video. But you can just download the project files as well because we're gonna post the project files. They should be in the comment section or something. I'll figure out where to put them. Uh, but so you can just start off with these objects ready to go in Blacksmith 3D. But in case you're doing it from scratch, this is what you do. So even if you don't want your whole texture to be sym symmetric, you cannot help but to have your arms symmetric uh, because that's the way the, these UVs are set up. So there's no choice in that matter. Uh, you can't bring in your own avatar at this time into uh, Second Life, so you're stuck with both arms looking the same. So with that being said, you have all this freedom on the body. You might want to put a tattoo on this side and not on that side. But this transition area between this arm and that arm, let's just use, make sure you use, use symmetry when you're painting around this area. And then now let's pick another color just to be uh, uh, illustrative here. Now if I paint a little bit over here, it looks perfect because you're using Blacksmith 3D's symmetry to automatically paint the same thing on both sides but uh, it, which is compensated for the fact that you, you have this natural symmetry happening here anyway. So that's what you do. All you do is, even if you don't want a perfectly symmetric texture, make sure you use symmetry when you're painting these areas and that'll solve the problem. And one last thing is the exact same thing happens down here on the feet. So if I was to paint on one foot, wait, let's undo this. If I had to turn off symmetry and paint on one foot, it shows up on the other side for the exact same reason. They decided in UV space that you shouldn't have two different colored feet. They're always gonna be the same. So they overlap as I'm about to show you. Here we go. One foot, bottom, uh, top and bottom, two legs. All right, one foot, two legs. Same old problem. So if you're going to paint something on this leg, which doesn't show up on that leg, but you're getting this issue over here, how do you fix it? You say use symmetry, and then you paint a little bit here, and then that's fine. You have a nice even transition between this side and that side. And now just say for the, you want this leg, the rest of this leg to be purple and the other one to be green then you're fine, you're good, there's no issues. As long as when you're painting this area, make sure symmetry's on, regardless if you want your texture to be symmetric or not. And you, Bob's your uncle, everything's good. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Um, you're now able to paint a bunch of weird, wacky colors onto your Second Life uh, avatars. Now, obviously, these aren't very interesting. You're not gonna go walk around the world uh, dressed up like this. The girls or boys, for that matter, will even talk to you. Um, so we'll have some more videos coming up on how you can do uh, photorealistic uh, skinning of your textures. So if you want to use your own face, or you know, um, or if you want to get <coughs> some models from uh, like uh, photographs, some photorealistic models to use, um, you can use those. Uh, I can even go into some resources for. Um, 3DSK, for example, is a really good site for getting them. Just got to watch out. Some of those pictures are a little disturbing, but, <laughs> you know, naked old guys and all that. But they're good uh, artistic references. Um, but in any case, I'm rambling. So that is the purpose of this tutorial, is to show you how to set up the basic um, um, Second Life avatar. Now I'm going to, like I said, uh, check the comment section. I will uh, post links to these project files so you can just start with them ready to go. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, have a good one guys.